Hi, welcome to Faz Edu World. In this video, I am going to discuss one of the important topics in linguistics as well as in English literary theory that is structuralism in linguistics. This is a common area in unit exams too. So, let's move on to the topic structuralism. Structuralism is the methodology that implies that elements of human culture must be understood by the way of other relation to a broader system or structure. It is the most influential school of linguistics from the early to the mid of 20th century. It is purely descriptive in nature and considers that language has a structure. The main proponents of structural linguistics are Ferdinand de Zorger, Leonard Bloomfield, etc. And now we move on to the contribution of Leonard Bloomfield to structuralism. Bloomfield is an American structuralist famous for his monumental work Language written in the year 1933 and that book is considered as the bible of the structuralists. He considers that language has a structure. He also explains that language has a pattern of stimulus and response. Bluefield gave the concept of immediate constituent analysis that is IC analysis which means a sentence can be divided into small immediate constituents. And now we have Ferdinand de Zorcha. He is a Swiss linguist and one of the founders of 20th century linguistics. His work a course in general linguistics published in the year 1916 assured in a revolution in linguistics and in the understanding of the structure of language. Zorger made a lot of distinctions in the area of language study that set the foundation for the modern structural approach to language. And now we have Zorger's distinctions Lang and Parole, Synchronic and Diachronic, Form and Substance, Sign Symbol Distinction, Signifier and Signified, Syntagmatic and Paradigmatic Relations. And first we have Lang and Parole. This distinction is proposed by Ferdinand de Zorger. Lang describes the social impersonal phenomenon of languages as a system of signs. It is psychological, fixed encoding of messages. Parole, on the other hand, describes the individual personal phenomenon of language as a series of speech acts. It is psychophysical, free and encoding of messages. Then synchronic and diachronic approach. This distinction was made by Ferdinand de Zorger in 1916. Diachronic approach views linguistic phenomenon in terms of its development through time. It was the major concern of traditional linguistics. It traces the historical development of language, so it is equivalent to historical. Synchronic, on the other hand, traces the phenomenon of a particular time. Zorger gives priority to the synchronic approach to language and supports structuralism. Now, form and substance. 
Substance and form are the two parts of the quality of language. Substance is the raw material of a language. So we have phonic substance, graphic substance, etc. To make these substances meaningful, we should arrange these in a particular form. That is, uh, you can see the sounds e, k, and t. These are foreign substances without a meaning. When we arrange these three substances in a particular order, we get a meaningful word that is kit. The next distinction is sign symbol distinction. Language is made up of signs and it is the central fact of language. A sign is a physical marker which carries some information. It is direct, brief and precise. Symbol on the other hand is more than mere indication. It contains more information like just the waving of hands. So the waving of hands is a sign but it has more meanings like dismissal, farewell etc. And the next is signifier and signified. This is very very important. The linguistic sign consists of two parts the signifier and the signified. That is, the word or sound is the signifier and the concept or the mental image is the signified. For example, the word tree is a signifier and the mental image, the, you can see a picture of tree, you know, the mental image is a signified. And the last contribution of Zorja to structural linguistics is syntagmatic and paradigmatic relationship. A paradigmatic relation is a relation that holds between elements of the same category, that is, elements that can be substituted for each other. A syntagmatic relation is a relation that holds between elements that are combined with each other. That's all. Thank you.